night I've got a story to share. That's true. It was 1971. Christmas Day. When I ran down the stairs, I saw my father in the reclining rocking chair, crying. Father, what has happened? And he looked to me and said, Mater has died. Now Mater was the name that we called our grandmother. Three days before Christmas, Mater and Jaja, as we called our grandfather, headed out to California. Goodbye and do well the rest of your life. That was the last time her earthbound body was seen in our household. Little did we know, we would see Mater again in the very near future. <laughs> the night of her funeral, the house was full of friends and family. As everyone was gathered, reminiscing of stories of Mater in the younger days and through her life, the smell of Narcissus Noir, a very potent French parfum, waved through the air. It went around the room as if somebody was actually wearing it and walking by. One by one, around the room, everyone was almost choked with the strong smell of black narcissus. Mother called to us children and said, What are you doing playing in grandmother's perfume? I had gotten it for her for the holidays. Little did they know, none of us had been touching the perfume. Everyone just marched it off as well. One of the children must have done something. The next incident was when a neighbor lady was over having coffee. There was an explosion in the garage. Now in those days, five gallon water jugs were made of glass. We had one in the garage that imploded into a pile of dust. Mother, the neighbor lady, my father and my brother ran to the garage to see what had happened. They simply saw a pile of dust. They marked it off as, oh well, the lid must have been on and the heat made it combust. The next incident is when my brother moved out of the house after asking my mother if in Florida we have earthquakes. Later we found out it was because his room and bed were shaking at night. The room, the dressers, everything was shaking. He moved out. Then one evening, lot of commotion in the youngest sibling's bedroom. When we flung open the door, we found the youngest was fast asleep and the toys that were always put in their place were scattered throughout the entire floor. The next incident was when my aunt came from the Czech Republic to visit. As they were sitting down having coffee and tea, the stench of burning rubber was so strong it was making <coughs> them cough and choke. <laughs> they could not find where the stench was coming from. The next incident was even more terrifying. Mother was on the phone, father was in the kitchen. When all of a sudden, brother one's door started 
faking in the door jam and the door that was twisting at a radical crazy rate. My father walked right to the door, but as he opened the door, without a second thought, he said, Mama, come in. Father believed in the hereafter and supernatural. He said he felt her and she had to come in to tell us something. By now, mother is absolutely terrified, will not get out of bed for days at a time. Neighbors wanted to bring crosses and put them on our doors. We had been so scared, we all started sleeping together in one room. When I looked up on top of my mother and father's long dresser, I could see a figure on the top, sitting there and just rocking back and forth. Back and forth. You couldn't see it completely, but in the dark, you could see that bit of the shadow. My brother and I were both terrified. They were everywhere. I could feel them touching me. I screamed for mother. I screamed for father. And I said, oh my God, please help me. Please help me. I, I'm blinded. I can't see. They turned on the light. Of course, there was nothing. But now we had to admit there was something happening in the house. By this time, Brother One was in college. He had befriended a parapsychologist by the name of Carol Parrish. He explained to her the things that were happening in the house and how doors were rattling. People were being touched. The scent was so strong in the house of Narcissus Noir, it was gagging. Too many incidences were happening to say there was nothing going on. Carol Parrish agreed to come over. Arrived at the house, walked in the door, and first thing, said there was a very powerful energy in there. She asked for an item that may have belonged to Mater. Mother gave her a scar. Dr. Parrish held the scarf closely, sniffing it and feeling it, holding it close to her person, and said the energy of Betty. Betty was her real name. No one ever told her her name was Betty. She said Betty's energy is extremely strong and she has something so important to say. You have to listen. She said to my mother, if you did not damn the energy in this house, if you did not damn it away, she would have actually materialized. She was so strong. Carol, look down. and said that he has three things she'd like to tell you. Number one, yes, there is life after death. Number two, had something to do with my grandfather that was never repeated. But the third, and most important, made her was buried in the wrong cemetery plot. She was in the wrong plot. Coincidence? At this time, it was about 10 o'clock in the evening. Mother, father, brothers, Dr. Parrish, all of us went to the cemetery. We went to where the family plots were. And oh my God. 
Mater's not there. She was buried three cemetery plots away from the family area. Now, they actually had to exhume her body and bury her in the proper hole. After that, all of the activity in the house stopped. For those that don't believe, there were many people that experienced what happened when Mater came back. <laughs> Good night. And then we heard it coming up from the stairs. Where is my golden shower? Where is my... Oh, wait, wait a minute. No, that's a different story altogether. No, never mind. Listen, the most terrifying... What the hell are you doing? Get the hell out of here. We just scared the dog shit out of me one more time. Even in death. You'll make sure you'll end up in the right hole. <laughs>